Hey guys, welcome back to Max Electronics. In today's video, we will be looking at those Chinese batteries, which is the uh, NPF96970 and also those little ones, which is F550 and F570. We will be repacking them and checking out the actual um, amperage of those batteries. So it says here that it is um, 8. Uh, 0.7 amps which is 8700 milliamps 62.6 watts i really doubt that because you put this in a camera and it lasts you you know like half an hour and that's it so we're going to check out the real capacity of those and we will repack them and i will go through a step-by-step -step process of how to open them i've actually had the video on the repacking those little ones before and um I had a few comments saying, oh, you didn't show how to open them and uh, how to solder them properly. So we're going to repack them and I'm going to guide you step by step on how to open them, how to remove the tabs of the old batteries and how to solder the tabs. I don't have the machine to or the spot welding machine, so we'll be soldering uh, and I'll show you every single step. So stick around. Let's go with uh, what you need to re pack those batteries. So you will need some tools, obviously. To open up, we're going to be using a Stanley knife. We're going to be using a pry tool and maybe a screwdriver, whatever we need to get inside carefully. Once we're inside, we will need some, uh, probably a screwdriver and the pliers to pick the tabs off carefully. We will also need, once we pick the tabs off and get the batteries out of there, we'll need replacement batteries. In my case, I've got plenty and plenty of 18650s, as you can see. They all, they're not brand new, they're recovered. And uh, yeah, some of them are really good condition, like uh, this one is uh, 2152 milliamps and 91 milliohms. And we will need to match them, I'll get to that part. And I've got plenty of them, I've color-coded them, so I've got red ones here, I've got some blue ones in here i've got um, green ones here so there's plenty of different types of batteries so we'll need new batteries then we will need uh, obviously soldering iron we will need some lead and we will need some ra type flux that's a really good stuff highly recommend it uh, i actually found out about it from mr carlson's lab so check him out um, then we will need wet towel and a dry towel, we could use paper towels, that's all we need. And at the end, to seal it back, we will need some epoxy resin. Uh, part A and B that you mix together, quick set is good. So let's start. So I'll zoom it in and let's start with this little Sony NP-F550-570 battery. So to open it up, we'll use a Stanley blade and just gently we're going to go along the edge here. There is a little edge here. And we're going to go along that edge. And you don't want to go deep, just slightly enough to cut it open, so maybe a millimeter in. Take your time. You don't want to go too deep, just enough, and watch your fingers too. And you'll hear a little snap, so you, you don't want to damage it. You can, you know, pry it and crack it open. But we do want to glue it back together, and we do want it to fit to feed back into the machine, like camera or whatever you're using it for, or a light. So we're gonna do very carefully. You'll notice it, it'll be very easy just to cut it open. So now I'm gonna try using a pry tool and see if I can pry it open. Okay, and we're cracking it as you can see. Now, if it doesn't want to crack further than it's cracked, do not force it. So you can try a little bit and see if that's working. If it doesn't work, use a Stanley blade and that would be probably your best option. So you're cracking it open just like this. And there we go, now we've got it open. So there's two cells inside. And they're soldered on the sides here, so let me zoom in. I probably should turn my soldering iron on. You can see tab here and tab here. There is no protection inside the cells. Actually, there is. I think I checked it out last time. Yeah, there is a protection underneath here. So that's uh, what there is inside the battery. So we're going to desolder those two tabs, noting the polarity. So that's negative, and it says here P and negative and P positive. So the soldering iron is hot. Let's remove this from the pack. 
So it should be pretty easy. Just heat up one contact and slide it off and do the same with the other contact here. And that's it. We've got our battery pack off. So as you can see, the uh, T-terminal is not connected on the pack. It's just floating. There is, there is actually, that's one, I wonder why. So they didn't solder it. It is meant to be soldered, but it's not. I wonder if there's a connection to it. Hmm, okay. So let's now repeat once we remove this pack. So let's repeat the same with a bigger pack. So again, we're going to grab the blade. <clears throat> and we're going to start gently cutting it open. Just watch how deep you're going. It's very important. You don't want to go into the cells and short something out. By the way, the little one that we opened is um, unbranded at all. I think it may have been actually uh, Top Max, maybe. But this one is a bonus cell. And I had problems with the bonus cells as soon as I got them. Okay, so again, we're cutting the first half and then we'll cut the second half down the bottom here. Uh, don't cut where the top is because that's usually where the board sits. So contacts, don't cut that, we'll snap that. But the bottom, we're cutting. So cut the corner as well. And again, just a millimeter in, so you don't want to go too deep at all. So just so you see it's opening up. And now we use the pry tool. And just try prying it the other half where the top circuit board is. And this one, oh, there we go. Again, see, it is not going any further. So I may use a bit of a Stanley knife here just because you don't want to break it. And try again. There we go. So now it is opening. Those ones would be a bit harder to open because they're packed with the batteries. And let's try this corner again a little bit. And see if we can use our pry tool to do the rest. This one's a bit harder to open than the previous one. There we go, we got it. So now again, we will try, unless they glued in. I know they're just very firm inside. There we go, so we've got six cells in here. Same arrangement, but this time we've got the center. It's actually a bigger board. But this time we've got the center tap soldered, so we're gonna remove um, that sticky bit. I'll try to do it by hand, because I wanna stick metal in there. There we go. And the same thing, we'll just desolder the top part. And there we go. So that's removed. Let's measure the uh, voltage on those cells. So as you can see, those three cells, yeah, those three cells in uh, parallel and then two cells in series with a big plate at the back. Okay, so we'll use the base plate. Okay, let's see. The first row is 3.1 volts. And the second row is 3.1, so they're balanced, but we don't know the capacity. I wonder if it says capacity on there. It doesn't say anything. It just says... Y-N-S-Y-A-H. Yeah, maybe it's a code. I'm not sure, but that doesn't look like a good cell. So they do have a bit of weight to them. Those ones are really light, though. Okay, let's, let's repack the little one. So first what we want to do, we want to 
bend the board outwards, undo those stickers. And what we're going to do is lift that terminal up just like this. Use the pliers, make sure you don't circuit, short circuit anything and just gently peel it off. Take your time. There we go. So we've got the first contact off. Now we're going to do the same. We're well, probably better do the, doing this side. And again, just gently make sure you don't short circuit anything. If the batteries are flat, it's good. Discharge them before doing this procedure. And there we go. We've removed the first cell. This one says it's um, 7.4 watts. So we'll have a look in a second at the voltage and everything. Same here, we're gonna slowly, I'm off shot, sorry, <clears throat> peel that off. Actually, those ones are really easy to peel. Usually they're hard. That's a really thin material. And we're gonna peel this side off as well, very carefully. There we go, the batteries are removed. So we'll remove all those rings as well. And I usually clean up the rest of this, still a bit of a plate left. Uh, using a screwdriver, lift it up and remove it so the battery top is clean and ready to go into the uh, charger slash monitor for the batteries and tester. So we can test out those batteries. As you can see that end is clean. Maybe run something across it just to flatten it up. There we go. So with this one, I haven't actually repacked the big one yet. So best bet would be, let's see. And this one's gonna be quite tricky. That is a big plate. Let's see if we can get that off carefully. Using a screwdriver, just, oh yeah. That is actually easier than I thought. So just with a screwdriver, I push it up and it comes loose. Well, it did before. Oh, there we go. Yeah, they just snap off. And let's do the same with this side. You want to roll it also, you don't want to pull it up, you want to roll it. It's okay if you bend this because you can always uh, bend it back. So roll it, yep, and roll this one. There we go. So even though it is bent, we can still grab pliers and just straighten it up. Of course, you can buy the new uh, plates, you know, like that. and do it fresh start and do everything new and buy spot welder. But again, we don't have a spot welder. And for most people, you know, if you're at home photographer or videographer and you want to repack the battery, you don't want to pay, or even if you're buying it for 20 bucks, like those batteries, but they crap, you want to repack it with the good batteries. Um, you're probably going to do it yourself unless you're willing to spend a lot of money and buy genuine Sony batteries. That's going to you know cost a lot. So that's done. Let's try the other side now. So what we got here, we're going to try the same thing. I'll see if my prior tool will fit. Let's try, start with a negative. And I'm going to try sticking it underneath the plates and just trying to get it off there. Now that we've got a space for the pliers. Okay, we've got one end off, and then just continue rolling the second end, and the third. Okay, we got that side off. And those three cells are free now. They glued together. And let's try do the, doing the same with those. Again, this one's you've got to be careful because that's positive. And the reason for that is that the, there's a leap of the negative here. So you don't want to have something like this sticking it across. 
and shorting out the cell. So I'm going to be really careful and I can see that I can pick that end off. And just again, gently roll it. And roll the second one. And roll the third one. And we have it off. And let's have a look at the board. It does have uh, quite a few MOSFETs and the microcontroller, surprisingly, it does have a microcontroller here. Uh, the batteries are marked so you don't have to uh, freak out about if which end goes where because you can see B plus and B minus here and you got P power plus and power minus and balanced. It's battery matching time. So let's have a look. I've just pulled out two random batteries of the uh, box, the green ones. And we see one says 2100, almost 2200 milliamps. One is 2210 milliamps. They're very close, you know, 20 milliamps different, 15 milliamp difference. So they should be suitable, but we see the difference in milliohms, which is internal resistance. So we've got to match that resistance. It is very important that you do match it. So even though the current pretty much matches, uh, the internal resistance is not. So I've pulled another two batteries here. And they are uh, 2202 milliamps and 2285, so almost 83 milliamp difference. However, they're very close in internal resistance, only 5 milliohms, or oh, well, 15 milliohms difference, they would be all right. So the lower the resistance, the better the batteries are. So we're going to use those two to repack the double cell because I only have two of those. So we'll chuck that in here. And for the big one, we're going to keep matching. So the closer the better. Let's pull out another two random ones out of the box. And we've got 180 milliohms, 2208, and um, 114, 1865. So 122, 180 milliohms is going to go. Let's try another two. 136 milliohms, 131, but then again, this one is low in milliamps, so we've got to match them. Give me some time, I'll match the batteries, I don't want to do it in front of you because, you know, you, you're going to be bored just sitting there for half an hour matching the batteries. So I'll match the uh, six batteries, and then I'll show you the ones that I've matched. I've matched the batteries, and before I show you which ones I've matched, I want to show you those two batteries and the differences. So if we look at this one, uh, it is almost 2200 milliamps but it is 236 milliohms internal resistance which means it will not be able to ride uh, to run high current loads so if you're running a motor or something like that that would be a bad battery it'll go flat straight away it's not going to pull it the voltage will drop so as soon as you connect the motor the voltage will drop from 4.2 to straight away to 3.7 you know or lower and that's it and the motor will die however that will still be able to run good um, LED lights. So if you have, you know, a torch or something, because the LED will be drawing just a low current, there wouldn't be a big load in it, it'll last for a long time. So it'll be to almost 2200 milliamps, but you can't pull the high um, load on that. This one, however, is very low current. It's only 1185 milliamps, but it's 105 milliohms, which means that you'll be able to run a motor for whatever it is, if it's running for one amp, you know, it'll be run it for almost an hour. So that's why the internal resistance is important. So now that I've shown you those two batteries, let's have a look at what I've matched. So here they are, here's the few of them. So three and three, I'll divide them in three and three like that. So the first uh, uh, parallel connections will be those batteries. You see there's slight differences in between the almost 100 milliamps difference between them. Uh, but the internal resistance is only 30 and 22, so 8 milliamps, uh, 8 uh, milliohms difference between them. So that'll be the first three in series, in parallel. And then the other three would be those three that I've matched. Again, so if you look at them, the internal resistance is only 4 milliohms difference between them, even though we got almost, um, yeah, almost 200 milliamps uh, difference between those two. 92, yeah, so this one 1962, this one's 2220, but that's okay. 
as long as the internal resistance is matching and it's low. So we'll do the smaller battery first. Let's prepare the batteries themselves. So we've got the batteries. So we're going to tin them first. So don't forget for this, you will need a wet paper towel, which I have here. You'll need a dry paper towel that I have here. It could be a normal cloth, but as long as you've got wet and dry one, we need our RA type flux. And what we're going to do, we're just going to do a little drop. Usually I have a little drop of it. Again, I'm not at my location, so I'd have to use the syringe with it. And we need a drop of the flux on one battery and drop of the flux on the other. This is RA type flux from MG Chemicals. You can find it on eBay. It is great. It is amazing. So now that we did that, my soldering iron is set to 440 degrees. We're going to take our tin and just quickly go for the first one. And then wet paper towel and then dry paper towel. Sticking the flux. The same with the second one. Wet paper towel. And then dry paper towel. And what that does is, first of all, because your soldering iron is hot, it is heating it up very quickly so the heat doesn't have time to go all the way deep inside the battery and uh, the RE type flux is so great it solders as you can see no problem so the, what the wet paper towel does it cools it down fast you may have heard I'm not sure if my um, audio compressor will capture that the hissing as you touch it so it cools it down quickly and then the dry paper towel obviously dries it so now that we've done that, uh, how convenient that rings got stuck to the paper towel. So we'll apply those uh, insulation rings to the positive. So here is the second one. Now those are in place. Now we'll do exactly the same thing to the negative. So again, uh, it's a bit hard, they, they wobbly now, but yeah. So a drop of RA type flux you don't need much, just enough, just enough for a drop. There we go. So drop here, drop here. And um, just a quick. And dry towel. And it is cold to touch already. So the same thing here. You don't need much of solder anyway. So that's done. And the dry paper towel. Oh, lost all the batteries. Another thing I forgot to tell you. When you're recovering the batteries, because as I said, those are not brand new batteries. They've been recovered from laptops, you know, all that sort of stuff. And once you test them, what I usually do, I test them in a cycle, like it's a three cycle with that Opus charger, which we're going to test the old batteries with. And I put on a three cycle and it spits out the internal resistance and the milliamps, you know, and I've printed out on a label maker and stick it on. And they fully charge at that stage, so I put them away, and then they're sitting down there, you know, for a while. There's nothing connected to them. And what I do next is, when I need to use them, I check them. So we set our voltage, uh, our multimeter to DC voltage, just so you can see on the screen here. And then I test the batteries to see the charge on them. So let's see this one. And it says... 4.11 volts, and let's test the other one. 4.10 volts, or 0.9, oh. 4.10. So they are close in voltage. If suddenly you say you know the batteries were fully charged, charged, and you test them, and one battery says you know 4.1 volts, and the other one says 3.9, you know there's difference. So you don't want to use those differential batteries because you know they were fully charged at the same voltage and now they're different, so pick another battery. 
but again that also depends on the internal resistance so that's why this one you saw this one was uh, 4.11 uh, volts and this one was 4.10 uh, because of this 5 milliamps this one's discharged a bit faster so now that we did this the next step would be to attach the those things so again let's see which one's positive that's battery negative so that would go that way and align it to the center actually let's tin them first so I'm gonna tin the ends of that circuit board here just a little bit you don't need the RE type flux because those strips they usually take up solder very easily and we'll want to tin it just on the other side that's enough and then the other one Yeah, that's great. Make sure they tin on both sides. Usually I would do this really close to me, but no, other way, if I do that, I wouldn't fit in the camera, so I'm doing it. Um, which way does it go? Yeah. So again, facing downwards, so we can fold that later. And uh, we get this close to the battery, so the battery and the circuit board are in a close proximity. Let me just bend that strip. So we solder the negative, straighten it up, and center it. And again, just a quick tip cold paper towel, a wet paper towel, and then dry paper towel. Now we do the positive the same way align the batteries, straighten that. You can even do it a bit lower, so the battery will hold it. So put the batteries next to each other, align them. Make sure it's all sitting straight. Let me just make sure, yeah. And the same thing, just a touch of a soldering iron. Cold paper towel and dry paper towel. That's done. Now we can um, put that back on, which needs to be glued on. So I'll have to get some double sided tape because this one is off. So let's do the bottom now. Again, straighten the contacts. Let's tin them. Let's do this. That's oh, still hot. Now, usually you'd get something to help you with, uh, like tweezers, and just hold it in place because you don't want to have your finger on that while you're soldering. It's going to be hot. battery this one came out in a bit of an angle so I'll have to redo this one You can to help you again. Uh, well, that's pretty straight. You can get um, you can tape them together if it's more comfortable to solder for you. Now let's solder this bit. It is still a bit off center, but that's all right. So there we go. That's soldered. So next thing we need to do is um, to clean all the flux. So for that I usually use cotton wool tips, just the earbuds, and uh, lacquer thinner. 
as I always do. If you watch my channel, you'd know. By the way, we got Patreon now, so if you'd like to support our channel on Patreon, please do. And we just clean the residue of the flux that was there. Great. Now, uh, let me find some um, yeah, double-sided tape so I can glue that back on because you don't want to you don't want those things touching. So I found some double-sided tape and I've stuck it here. Also the important thing is don't forget to put that strip, that paper strip, that insulates that metal strip from the positive on this side. So because this is a center channel, you don't want it to short circuit. So now we're going to fold the circuit board over that paper, compress it a bit, and put it back into the shell. So noting the polarity, so again, this is the negative and that's P negative. So that's how we're gonna put it back in. And I will be soldering that T tab as well. Uh, most equipment doesn't use it, but um, I reckon it's handy to have. Now that that's in place, I'm gonna grab the soldering iron and just tack that back in. Make sure that's all nicely fitted in. There you go, that's our first terminal. And the second one, and I'm going to add a, just a little bit of soldering here and solder that T-tab. There we go. So let's see if that fits all together. I don't see a reason why it wouldn't. It does. So the next step is going to be gluing it together. So I'm going to be using a quick set epoxy. It takes five minutes for it to set. So let's mix some of the parts and then we'll get onto the gluing part. I'll show you how to apply the epoxy. Okay, I've got everything ready now. So let's just check the voltage on the battery to make sure that it's uh, all good. And it is, it probably needs to be plugged into charger first, but let's check it on this. 8.2 to 8.2 volts, so that's great. Now with epoxy. So first what we've got to do is mix the epoxy. I usually use a little match and a little container. I'll grab the Stanley blade and I'll just make that sharp. Yeah, that's sharp enough. So we're going to add the epoxy part A and B just a little bit. We don't need too much epoxy for that. So I thought I, I was going to actually mix epoxy off shot, but then I thought some people will say, oh, you didn't show how to mix it. And um, that's what happened with the last video. So this time I'm going to do everything full process. That would be part A, which is resin, and part B, which is a catalyst. So we're mixing them in a 50-50 ratio. And again, this is a quick set epoxy, so you have five minutes to work with it. Mix it thoroughly, make sure it's all mixed very well. You can see it's turning milky color, which is the indicator that we're mixing it pretty well. The thing is, if you don't mix it well, you'll have some resin left or hardener and uh, they'll just, it just won't set. So make sure that it's all mixed well. Now that we've got this, we're going to take the other, the cover that is empty, which is this cover. And we're going to really lightly apply just a tiny, you don't need it oozing everywhere. You don't need to apply, you know, a liter of epoxy to it. Just enough, almost like you, if you can see how much I'm applying, it's almost invisible layer. And that's plenty of epoxy. You can put a little bit more in the corners there, but actual lines, just a tiny bit of epoxy, that literally that would be plenty. We've got thin layer of epoxy here. And now we're ready to put the cover back on. So just gently from the top, pushing that board and squish the battery together. As you can see, the epoxy is not oozing. 
There's a little bit of an overspill there, but that's all right. We'll let it set and then we'll cut it off with a Stanley blade. So press the battery together and it's uh, probably best to put it under something heavy and let it set. So I'm going to do right that, put a couple of books on top of it and wait for half an hour until it sets properly. So the battery is now ready. As you can see, it's actually raining outside tonight and uh, perfect weather to continue on with the project. So the battery is glued and all I have to do is just mark it that it's 20 hundred milliamps and that's it. So this battery is done. Let's, um, before we actually move on to the large one, let's put those batteries on charge and uh, see what they will give us. We can quickly have a look at the internal resistance and see if that would um, show something now. I did have to slice those so you can see it's bare metal there. I will tape it around or put it in another sleeve uh, because they were super glued together. So I'm going to put two of those batteries in. And I'm going to put two of the little the ones, the two cells from the, the blue ones are from the big battery and the purple ones are from the small battery. So let's put them all in and let's check the internal resistance. So let's see what that tells us. Looks over, yeah, some of them are over, one, well, this one's 140, so let's put them on a charge test and see what capacity they will tell us and then we'll compare it to what the advertiser says. Let's put them at 500 milliamps and off we go. So while that is happening, I'm going to... Uh, start with the large battery. So I'm going to disorder those terminals from the board so it's easier for us to do stuff. I've already prepared the batteries as you can see I've tinned the ends and I've put those uh, insulation rings on. So I'm going to use probably electrical tape and tape them together just while we solder the contact. So once we solder this plate, I'm actually going to prepare that plate now and um, yeah, which side, this side. So I don't think you will need any flux for this one because that should take up solder very well. Again, the soldering iron is set at uh, 440. And as you can see, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, perfect blobs. So for now I'm going to grab just four batteries and I'm going to tape them together, just four, not six, and obviously backwards like that, with just electrical tape which we will remove uh, in a second. So let's get it straight. Now again, don't do a super good job at it because we will be removing that anyway. So just like that, so they held together for now. Perfect. So now we're going to grab this plate and we're going to solder it like that. Starting with the center ones. And let's do this. Now remember the soldering side is down, it's underneath. And let's realign this one and repeat that with that battery. There we go. So they soldered. Now we can remove the tape. And probably using the same tape, we can add another two batteries. Make sure you know the polarity. So two of them positive, two are negative. And again, we're going to be using tape just to hold them in place. 
and we're going to remove it afterwards and again line it up feel free to apply a bit of pressure with the soldering iron just to make sure that it's soldered properly which is it did not so I'm gonna to have to do it one more time maybe add a little bit of flux there oh that was a bit too much There we go, now it's soldered properly. So now that we've soldered the top, well the bottom of the battery, let's switch to the top. So again, make sure they're aligned. Probably a good idea to put another layer of tape to make sure they're touching each other. So they're nice and compact and can fit back into the pack. And now we're going to be using those tabs that I've desoldered. Make sure they're facing the same way. So you don't want to do it that way. As you can see, they, that'd be different. So you want to face them the same way so we can solder them back to the board. And center it. And let's do the same thing again. There we go, so we've soldered one side and let's, let's just solder the other side and test the voltage. So here we go, the battery is soldered. Now let's have a look at the voltage on it. <clears throat> and we've got 8 points. <clears throat> And we've got 8.32 volts. Now we've got um, a board that we're going to solder on now and then we're going to add that extra tab. So let's solder the board. Just check the battery so that goes this way. Battery plus and make sure you know the polarity correctly. We're going to bend them slightly so it's easier to solder. And just heat it up and it'll go into its own spot. The board's now attached. Now we have to fold it down. There's already insulation there, so we're going to fold this down. Now that we've folded it, we're going to attach that little tab. Don't forget it, that's the one that goes all the way down to negative. So we can cut that tape off now. And let's add this here. Try and remember that's BM, yep. So let's add the BM onto that. And as you can see, it follows the negative path, so there is no really short circuit that is possible there. And we're just going to add a little bit drop of solder. Cool, so that's all done and that should be functional. Now we need to clean up all the flux that we've got there, so I'm going to do it right now. That's all cleaned up on both sides, so now we're going to, don't forget to put that little tab at the back that will keep the batteries in. Let's attach the front plate. Probably put some fresh solder on it first to make sure that it's nice and solid connection.
and let's attach that make sure it's sitting firmly in awesome let's add that little piece of uh, sticky thing that was on top there before and the battery is ready so let's make sure that that fits in there properly and it does so before we put the epoxy always make sure that it fits there properly let's get this back out very carefully oh. There we go. So now again, same thing. I'm just going to do some epoxy and epoxy it in and glue that spot in. So after you uh, set the battery and solder everything in, you will have to put it into charge, even though the cells are charged, to activate the circuitry. So you don't be surprised if you plug it in and the battery doesn't work. You'll need to plug it into the charger, unplug it, and that will activate the circuitry. So I'm just going to do epoxy and then we'll come back and have a look at the values on the uh, charger so here's the battery all glued and all fine I still haven't cleaned up the edges it's time to have a look at the results of those Chinese batteries so here is the charger they're fully charged and let's have a look and naughty naughty the batteries are only 400 milliamps 420 and 430 and the pack says they 2400 milliamps so they're pretty much four times smaller capacity than advertised. The big ones, however, are um, 1928 and 1968, almost two amps, still not 2.4 amps. So that's the Chinese batteries for you. And that's quite a fresh battery as well. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I uh, will be labeling, the, labeling those batteries. And actually, let's check um, quickly the internal resistance of them. And let's see, 120, 244, those, this one's all right, this one's 123, that's getting closer to the average. So yeah, that's it, that's Chinese batteries for you. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and support me on Patreon if you like. My name is Max, see you next time, bye!